Okay, so where are these things? Yeah, look, a lot of this stuff does reside in low Earth orbit. So this is again that area between a couple of hundred kilometers and about a couple of thousand kilometers. Now these are the ones that are actually tracked. Yes, exactly. And this is going to be an important point. In order to be tracked, you need to be 10 to 15 centimeters. Now, okay, that's probably big enough to track most of the satellites, but it by far far is not enough to track all of the little bits of junk go on it. So whenever you see this, the problem is actually, we think, 10 to maybe 50 times worse than just all these little big points. Mm -hmm. Now, this isn't to say there's, there's actually more at this part of the Earth, because we're looking at the density as we go overhead. Um, so they're kind of randomly even distributed. There are a few streams. They are mostly contained to low Earth orbit, though. But as we talk about, there are other orbits, like geostationary orbit. OK, so you can see the vast cloud of them close to the Earth. Um, and then there's a line across here. What's that? Yeah, so in fact, these are the ones that are specifically in a perfectly uh, equatorial, and sometimes we get in a perfectly polar orbit. So in fact, if we look up top, you can actually see this ring of satellites in geostationary orbit that, as you move at the rate, you're always at the same spot of Earth. Now, as we talk about, lots of advantage to these, right, Paul? Yes, that's right. But the problem is they're also, it has to be in a very specific spot, right? It's that little bit of space, that little orbital family, those orbits just over the equator, geostationary are getting quite crowded. Exactly, because lots of countries want to use that. So it's not just the Americans and Russians now, all the different countries want this lucrative area. And it, you know, again, we do have things in between. And that is because if you need to take the rocket to this geostationary orbit, well, the rocket's going to stop somewhere here, and that's going to turn into debris. You'll have a booster that pushes off and then leaves a booster behind in some intermediate orbit. Exactly. So it's not just that you have it here and here. You can get stuff everywhere in between. And this is actually when you start to fly through this junk, so to speak, uh, you can start to, re I think, really appreciate the the chaoticness of it, because these things are still orbiting around. Mm -hmm. Now, the, one of the principles I think we have to talk about when we worry about space junk is everything is slowly being pulled back to Earth, right, Paul? OK, um, before we go into this, let's think a bit about what's happening here. I mean, yes. My first impression about space is that space is really, really exactly. big. That's right. And therefore, we can put a lot of stuff up, right? Yeah, and that's true. Uh, and when you're up there, like the illustration we started off with, it's like junk everywhere. That's it's not like that's this. right. I mean, yes, there's a lot of junk, but it's still any particular place in space, you're not going to see a piece of junk. Exactly. It's going to be hundreds of kilometers away. The problem is that it's moving really fast. That's right. And so it might be 100 kilometers and then whoo, it goes past. And uh, so you, you've got a decent chance of being hit. So you can see these things in low Earth orbit. We know the, low Earth orbit's very, very quick. Exactly. And so it's zipping around. And as you can tell, they're, they're also moving in different directions now. Because they weren't put in a perfect thing, you can get some almost swimming upstream and some kind of moving back. So it's not that everyone's following the same path, the same speed. You know, you're not merging into traffic on the parkway. It's now trying to move into traffic, but it's coming this way and that way and this way. And they're now going thousands and thousands of kilometers an hour. And so this is why we worry is, as you said, they're very fast. They sometimes can be hard to track. And because they're fast, they're zipping around. You may not see it. You may not know it's there. So even if you work, I may not know that you're on coming on me at 25,000 kilometers an hour. Yeah. And so this is kind of this principle. As we start putting more of it up, we get more of it going in all of these different chaotic orbits. And even though, yes, space is very big and there is a lot of room, it is slowly filling up in some of these parts. And as we'll talk about a little bit later, one collision can lead to thousands of collisions.